Chapter 231, Public Law 1975, entitled Open Public Meeting Act. I have notice of this meeting has been provided as, as specified in the Act. Proper notice of the public meeting was provided in the notice of said notice was posted at the entrance of the board office. Mail from the Nutley Sun to Star Legs and the North Journal Herald News and the Nutley Journal. Mail from the Nutley Township Clerk. Advertising the Nutley Sun posted on a district website. This is an official meeting. As I mentioned, in consideration of all here present and in recognition of the importance of these proceedings, it is requested that all cell phones and pages be turned off for silence for the duration of the meeting. Thank you very much. <coughs> Stand for Pledge of Allegiance, please. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I don't have it memorized. I wish I did. I'm just glad to see everyone's here for the uh, self-assessment for the anti-bullying initiative. Thank you all for coming. All right, Joe, you've been doing this long enough. I would think you would know it by heart right now, right? Yeah, it's a little different. I know. Um, I guess I could get started, though, while Ian fixes it. He takes care of it. Um, the Anti-Bullying Bill of Rights Act was passed in January 2011. Um, so it became into effect in September of 2011, was the first year. Part of the Anti-Bullying Bill of Rights Act This is the latest technology at work. There you go, Ian. Thank you. Is this, Ian, how can I, I advance with this one? Or? Thanks, Ian. Are you going to advance it? Okay, thank you. So uh, part of the Anti-Bullying Bill of Rights Act um, was that the state of New Jersey, the Department of Ed, stated that at the conclusion of each year, the, the state was going to grade each school district. Well, each school was going to be graded on their anti-bullying initiative. And basically, what the average of all those schools, their grade, will be the district's grade. Um, so this is why we're here this evening. Um, in March, we received a notice from the Department of Ed stating that schools will be self-assessing. Prior to this, I didn't have any knowledge. I was under the assumption that we were going to be submitting reports and they were going to come and give us a grade. Well, we, in March, we received this memo stating that we will be grading ourselves. Ian? So part of the assessment was not from last school year, the 2011-2012 school year. It was going to start midway through the year. So this is actually from January 2011 to June of, of, um, of last month. What the state did, they provided us with a 24-page 
rubric. And in that rubric, there was eight core elements. There were eight, um, I guess you'd say standards, with indicators stating that if you met this indicator, how do we know if you met this indicator? Here's a category. Did you meet it partially? Did you meet it? Did it meet all requirements or did you exceed all the requirements? And it gave us examples of what we had to do. In addition to those examples, they also stated that we need to provide sample documentation. Once again, we did not have this until March. So throughout from March to um, the end of the school year, the anti-bullying specialists were trying to gather as much information they can to help substantiate our, our ratings. So one of the things that we worked on was trying to gather all this information because this would be part of QSAC. They could come in and they could say, well, how do we know? Please substantiate your ratings for the Anti-Bullying Bill of Rights. Ian, right? There were, once again, there were eight elements. The first element talked about, um, discussed HIV, just to let you know, stands for Harassment, Intimidation, Bullying. What are the programs, approaches, and other initiatives? There were five indicators. One of them was, is your district establishing programs? The second one was, are you implementing programs? And the third one, are you assessing? The next one talked about, does your initiatives address HIV? The fifth one, is your school safety team identifying and reviewing school climate? Once again, I am the coordinator. I oversee the anti-bullying initiative. However, the principal and the school and the, um, the anti-bullying specialist of each school basically um, runs the show at that school regarding HIV. All right? I'm here to provide state um, <coughs> the information for the state as well as conduct presentations for the Board of Education and for the public. The second core element talked about training on the, um, training on the Board of Education approved HIV policy. Are we training staff? Are we training staff on the protected characteristics? Are we discussing the policy with students? The third core element had five indicators. Is there ins instruction on HIV as well as <coughs> suicide prevention? Which one of the things that we were planning on doing was this past June was doing a program for suicide prevention for staff. However, we, that's been postponed until the fall. Are the anti-bullying specialists, just for those who aren't aware, ABS stands for anti-bullying specialists. Are they providing in-service training? Are the school safety team members, are they providing professional development? Are they given an opportunity to go out and attend training sessions on HIV prevention, school climate? Are, school, are our school leaders being trained? Um, I actually will be at the August 6th <coughs> administrator retreat to review some of the anti-bullying initiative and the law. One of the things that we're finding out is every meeting that I do go to that's, a, that's, that's sponsored by the state, I'm always learning something new about this new, um, the new laws. This will be the third year that's been implemented. The fourth element talks about curriculum and instruction. Are we providing students with ongoing age-appropriate instruction according to the core curriculum content standards? Are we observing week of respect, which is the first week in October? Right. One more hand. Thank you. Um, the, fifth, the fifth element talks about personnel. Are the anti-bullying specialists appointed by the principals? Are they meeting with the anti-bullying coordinator, me? Um, since, this, since January 2011, um, 2012, I'm sorry, I've met with the anti-bullying specialist 11 times. Are the school safety team teams meeting at each school? They have a, they're required to meet a minimum of twice per year. They have exceeded that already. The sixth element, school level HIV incidence reporting procedures. Are we following the procedures of reporting HIV new cases as well as prior cases? Seventh element, are we notifying parents? Are we completing an investigation within 10 days as required by the law? Are we preparing our written reports, which are, which are required by law to be sent to Mr. Lazovic within two days of completing the investigation? Last, um, the HIP reporting. Do we have a procedure that staff could report it verbally as well as written? written? And right? I know there's a lot of numbers up here. But this is the breakdown according to the elements. All the elements are primarily, primarily the same. However, there is a difference in core element one. Just so, as a reminder, what core element one is, it talks about the programs, approaches, and initiatives. I think one thing that we need to be aware of, 
This is the Nutley School District HIB initiative. However, our goal, and we know that each school is separate and distinct. So one school may be, may be doing something different from another school based upon patterns, trends, or what's going on with students. Um, for core element number one, the one of the concerns that we saw, myself as an anti-bullying specialist, um, was the assessment of, of programs. Majority of the schools felt that we met that partially. One of the things that the state is requiring and is looking into is data. How are we data driven? And one of the things that we need to improve on is conducting surveys for students, student and staff assessments of the programs, the HIV prevention programs, even evaluation reports. If we bring a program in, let's evaluate it um, so we have a better understanding that our information is driven by data. Is driven by data. Um, also, for core element number one, one of the things that we are, we've already worked on already this past school year is that myself as the student, um, in addition to being the anti-bullying coordinator, I, I am the student assistance coordinator for, for Walker Middle School. Myself, Mrs. Casale, we're student assistance coordinators. Mrs. Pinnell, who is the SAC at Lincoln School. One of the things that we have discussed um, and Mr. Lazvik, Ms. Villani, is that all the counselors will be under Ms. Davilio. So instead of having different, I guess, frames of references as a SAC, student assistance, and guidance, we'll all be working under her, under the director of guidance. Um, with Mrs. Davilio, we already talked about one of the things that we're going to do with this upcoming school year is research a K-12 character education program, as well as working with Mr. Odell, and the um, strategic, strategic planning character committee, which is also working on researching a character education program as well. So we're all going to be working together. But as you can see, primarily all the other elements are, are primarily the same. The same uh, under, under the core element, it talks about the number, the maximum. I think as, as, a, as all the schools felt that we primarily met all of the required needs. Um, do we exceed them? We have not exceeded them yet. It's early, and we are looking always constantly to improve um, in our HIV initiative. This, is, this will be the third year that the law has been implemented. Um, the school grade, maximum of 75. As you can see, we're primarily averaging out anywhere from high 50s to low 60s. Um, I'm also part of the Bergen County Anti-Bullying Coordinators Association and speaking to a lot of representatives of, of Bergen County schools. Um, we don't have one in Essex County yet that a lot of other districts are in that high 50s to low 60s range. Questions yet, no? Ian? Thank you. Uh, once the deadline is August 15th, once our, once our ratings are Board of Ed approved, we will be electronically submitting these grades into the uh, website, into the, into the, into the uh, Department of Ed's web-based system. Uh, Mr. Lazovic will certify them. Also, there is a statement of assurances that it's a, basically it's a checkoff that uh, indicates that our district has followed all the procedures set forth by the Department of Education. All right. Once again, the public reporting, in addition to being here this evening, hopefully, by uh, the first week in October, which initiates the Week of Respect, our district and each school will be receiving a grade <coughs> by the Department of Ed. I, I'm under the assumption it's the same grade that you may see here. Um, within 10 days of receiving notice of our grades, each school's grade should be posted on their school's website, as well um, the, district, the district grade should be posted on the district's homepage. Um, as well as, I believe sometime in November, I will be presenting last year's, this past school year's statistics on HIV, and at that time I will review the grades at a, at a, at a meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Before we proceed, if, if the people in the hallway would like to come in, there are some seats up in here rather than having to stand. Just take time, everybody, to come in.
Anybody else wish to come in? Yeah, there's plenty of room. Come on in and make yourself uh, comfortable. We'll move around a little bit. Careful um, If you like, you can come up the middle. Um, and there's, come up the middle steps will take you up the stairs and you get a better view of what's going to happen. Mr. Capella, thank you very much as always. Thanks to your team. Uh, I am excited to know what's going to happen as we become part of one department. We're going to focus our efforts. We're really looking for a K-12 student support program so that every year we have certain programs that happen for kindergarten students and parents, for middle school, for high school. We really appreciate everything you've been doing. Again, we also discussed the idea that it's really the first time we're doing this at all schools. It's nice to see that we did well in comparison, but we're also, we still have room to grow. So thanks again for that. Um, Dr. Shippenhauer and Mrs. Don Marino are here. We've been talking back and forth how to present special services as a department. Uh, and really, it's, it is too much for one presentation. So what we've done is broken it up into pieces. We'll be having some regular presentations as they will talk about. Um, but again, what we're trying to do is, is focus on what's most of it as Dr. Shippenhauer and Mrs. Don Marino, congratulations again. Um, this is our first summer with our new team. And they're going to be presenting on a fairly regular basis, so this is the first thing. So welcome and thank you. So much. Okay, uh, Mr. Lazovic asked me when I actually first came if I could, in addition to overseeing the department and the daily, everyday running of it, if I could also assess. So, um, Ian, if you would. <laughs> Sorry, I'm used to having the. Um, I know everyone here is here to hear about our special services. Right? Isn't this wonderful? Do you see the turnout we get? <laughs> um, okay, so the purpose of um, the, tonight, what we're going to present is the purpose of the review, an outline of the review, a little bit about our parent advisory committee that we're going to be doing, and uh, then Mrs. Doyle Marina will talk about the update on our integrated preschool program, which we're very, very excited about. Um, I am, I'm in the process of reviewing, but we got so bogged down with the hiring process, uh, which we're, tonight you will be board approving quite a few, so we weren't really ready to present the review, so I thought what I would do is at least give you an outline of what will be presented next month. Um, the purpose of the review was just to look at what was good and what was not, what was good or bad, but, you know, what we were doing correct. And I will have some accommodations at the very beginning of the review next time um, because we have an awful lot of good stuff going on in this district. First and foremost, the staff. The staff here is just incredible. The community, the parents are so involved. It's just, it's just such a pleasure to even work here. Um, everybody's on the right wavelength. We all want to continue to be in compliance and move forward. Um, so in that vein, we're actually looking at different, looking at restructuring. Once the hiring is completed, as I said, we're in the middle of it, then we can look at restructuring. Uh, you can move it, Ian, because um, Mr. Lazovic asked me to look at are we appropriately structured with support staff and administration and to meet the needs of students. So putting on my previous State Department monitoring hat, I was able to see initially when I came that we were very, very short CST members, which then impacts the individual team member's ability to case manage with the parents, to write IEPs, to do follow-up. Um, teachers are kind of all over. Um, special education is very fluid because depending on the population and where the population might be at any given time is where we're going to have to have the teachers and where we're going to have to have the paraprofessionals. Um, so we really need to look at where it's structured, how fluid we are at moving, and then also our paraprofessionals. Um, so next month I will actually have a specific outline of, I mean specific data to support our structuring. Um, staffing, as I said, we do need to restructure. Um, we have a couple of case managers at the elementary level who are currently case managing. We have one case managing 90 and one case managing 85, which is absurd. Um, really, it's about 40, 45 to 50 that they should be case managing. So with the new hires, we had some retirements. We have to do replacements, the changing population uh, and programs. For instance, we had an autistic class at our middle school, which had a teacher and two paraprofessionals. For some reason, 
this coming year, the 13-14 school year, and the following year, we are not going to have any students for that class. So we're going to have to look at moving the teacher and the aides. That's the nature of the, you know. So I know that people get very building specific, but if the needs change, then we have to be fluid enough to be able to, to put it where the needs are. I was asked to look at if we have the appropriate number of staff for the students, where they're placed. Um, and so we're going to be looking. Um, Mrs. Doyle Marina will be working with the paraprofessionals. I think that was in my three months that I was here, I just could not get to the paraprofessionals because I was dealing with child study team members and with teachers, uh, nurses as well. And um, so I did not meet in those three months with the paraprofessionals, which I felt really very bad about by the end of the year. But with Mrs. Doyle Marina, <coughs> That is what she will be doing. We have 84 paraprofessionals. <coughs> so she will be able to really keep in touch with them and meet with them. And that falls into what our training is going to be, which is really the exciting part. When you're in education, we're here to teach and to train. And um, so I was asked to look at what kind of training we need, what kind of training the administration needs. I know uh, I spoke with Mr. Lazavik. I want us all to be on a common language. We have. In some buildings, they refer to a resource center pullout class as one thing in another building, and it's resource center pullout. So we need to all be on the same, have a common language, which will help us with our placement, will help us with our planning. Some of the training we know we're going to need is in-class support. Um, I think we talk, I talked a little last time, and Mrs. Doyle Marina will talk about it. Uh, the preschool standards, we want to have a standardized uh, curriculum at the preschool level. So you can turn it in. So that's the fun stuff. So we'll be back next month, and we will specifically tell you what we're going to be doing. Mr. Lasvik also asked me to look at the compliance for the department. And as, as happened, we were in the middle of special education monitoring. Now, we passed everything except for our speech language uh, area. Uh, they were not happy with the way some of the speech language IEPs were being written. Um, I spoke with the monitors. Again, I, I was part of the Northern Region monitoring team when I worked for the State Department. And I said, you know, why are you coming out on June 27th? You were just here in March. It's going to take us a while once we change it to then have it reflected in the IEPs that it actually has been changed. But they said, well, we're scheduled to come, so we're going to come. And they came. It was great. It was good seeing them. We caught up on a lot of things. And they went through a lot of IEPs, and again, because we didn't have enough time elapsed for different IEPs, it was more of the same. So there's one area in the speech IEP, the, um, what we call the CLAP, which is really her ed status. They felt that they were just written too uniformly, so they want a little more variation in the writing of it, which is not, it's not a big deal to do. So when the speech therapists come back in June, we'll have a training. And the monitor still is over a month, have not sent us a letter to that effect, but they said they would um, probably come back in January or February, which will give us that six months to be able to change it and have it reflected in the IEPs. So that's where we are with the compliance. Other than that, we're in pretty good shape, um, just that overwhelmed and trying to keep up with the timelines. But again, I'll have more specific data next month for that. We do have to have a parent advisory group. Our code does state the special education code, and we do everything by the special education code. States that each district board of education shall ensure that a special education parent advisory group is in place in the district to provide input. Ooh, thought I took that two input out to the district on issues concerning students with disabilities. So in that process, we're getting a letter together that we will send to all the parents, uh, inviting them to be part of this parent advisory group. Uh, we will have to do it by lottery with criteria because we want a representation of parents from each building, from preschool, from at a district. So we will kind of get those groups together and then pick out so that well, parents have a fair chance to be on it. Uh, generally, they're on it for a two-year period. Um, it's a two-year term usually, and um, once we know who the parents are going to be, we will notify them, and then we will provide a list of the meetings for the entire year. Um, generally, you do the meetings, some meetings in the evening, some meetings during the day, so that everyone, you know, if there's child care issues or work issues, everyone can act actually get there. 
They usually last about an hour, but I've seen some of these meetings go two and a half, three hours. We order pizza sometimes as it goes so long. And we're going to ask if we could have a Board of Education liaison there as well at the meetings. Uh, and that's really to get the input of what's going on because, you know, from a parent's perspective, because sometimes what we as administrators think is going on, sometimes the parents come in and say, did you know that? And it's just important for us to have that perspective as well. Okay, um, Mrs. Doyle Marino is going to, um, she's going to be actually supervising the preschool integrated program, so she'll bring you up to date on what's going on with that. Hi, good evening. Um, our preschool integrated program here in the Nutley Public Schools has come to fruition, which is just a beautiful thing for students with disabilities, uh, working alongside students with, without disabilities. So we're really pleased to offer this program for the 2013-2014 program. Can I see there's an error there? I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> the program will serve the needs of three and four-year-old preschoolers who require special education services with general education preschool students. It will also be aligned with the New Jersey Department of Education preschool teaching and learning standards. And I know Dr. Schippenhaus had, had uh, worked on these at the last uh, Board of Ed meeting, but there are four preschool standards for approaches to learning, standards 9.1 through 9.4, and more information can be found at the, the, the website that I've attached that brings you directly to the Department of Web, uh, Education's website. The integrated preschool program will be held at Radcliffe Elementary School, and there will be an AM session at this time, but depending on the response, and we're already getting phone calls to the department asking, can my child be enrolled? Uh, if, if we have a large enough response, a PM class may be implemented as, as early as January. So that would be something to look forward to as well. The cost for the program is $3,000 for the school year, which can be paid in monthly installments. The child must be toilet trained and parents must provide transportation to and from the school. The program will be advertised in the local newspaper and on our website. As of tomorrow, it will be going up with board approval, of course. Regular education enrollment is limited and in most cases will be determined by a lottery system. There will be eight slots available on the regular ed side at this time. Students with special needs, however, will be placed according to their IEP, their individual education plan. Uh, students eligible for the lottery must be between three and four years of age by October 1st and may not turn five prior to the same date. The advertisement, the community notification that will be going out uh, will be located on our special services website, which I've included there, and in the local paper, the Nutley Sun. The application for lottery can also be found on our website and must be received by the special ed services department by August 22nd. And then the following day, the lottery will be held. If you are notified that your child has been chosen to attend this program beginning in September, you will need to download a registration packet that is on our Nutley Schools website. All registrations must be done in person and by appointment only, and I believe that would be with Ms. Boyle and Mr. Ferrara. Uh, and that's, that's it. That, it. that was it. I had, uh, yeah, the next steps. Uh, that's it. So we're, we're really pleased to have this program, and it, and it has come to fruition. So I think it'll be a great experience on both ends, for both sides. Yes, and just uh, the next steps are we're going to be looking at the teacher talk study team and paraprofessional placements for the 2013-14 school year. Uh, and then within a week or two, once we make them, which will be this week, hopefully you approve them all tonight, um, then we will let the staff know. We'll send letters or phone calls out to the teachers and child study team and paraprofessionals if they're moving. And there will be some movement. It's just the nature of the beast. Um, you know, if you have more students that require the one-on-one -on -one in one building, there's a class no longer in another building, that we're just going to have to shift. Um, that's the way it goes. Child study team will have to fit shift also because we're trying to get case management numbers down to 40, 45, or 50, which is just reasonable. Um, then we also, for the remainder of this month, we need to be planning the trainings and in-services and meetings. Uh, we have real time coming in, that's our database. We need to get consistent with that, that all the team members are using the correct and the, the it needs a lot of work, our, our special ed database part of real time. Uh, we need to get trainings like Handle with Care, 
Uh, we need meeting agendas. We'd like to have all the meetings for all the child study teams. We'll be meeting with teachers by buildings, and we'd like to have that for the year laid out for when everyone returns in September. Um, and again, we do have the monitoring we still have to deal with. Uh, prepare the uh, actual data to the board as the outline indicated. And uh, again, we have to get the parent advisory group going because we'd like to have that first meeting uh, in September. And uh, we'll be doing the preschool lottery on August 22nd. And then notifying parents that their child was picked. Again, and the preschool lottery, by the way, is also, um, um, it's a true, it will be a lottery. I mean, we will actually fold the names up and put them in a bowl and someone will be pulling them out for the eight slots. But we, there will be times perhaps when there is less than eight because, for instance, we have a twin that might need to attend it as a general ed. So there might be exceptions once in a while, not often, but just very rare. And that's it. Thank you very much, Mr. Sheriff. And, and um, I know a lot of us are excited about you being here, Mr. Boyle being on board with us. And certainly this preschool is something that you know, I and a lot of board members have been looking for for quite a while. So we're, we're excited about it also. Great. Are there any questions on from the board members? Thank you. Mr. Lazarus. Bear with me in two months since our last meeting, so I'm very sure to come on and get updated both the public and the board. Before I start, we do have seats over here to my left if you don't want to stand in the back. If you take a couple of seconds there, I'll wait. Strategic plans that we would never move 
an important initiative about the appropriate professional development to support that initiative. It's in black and white in our strategic plan, and I'm happy to say that all evidence to the positive that we are, in fact, living by that standard, and that professional development will continue into next year. Language arts. Uh, the orders for language arts are being finalized. Actually, the guided reading libraries that we talked about, one for building, will ship this week. Um, and as they're finalizing our classroom libraries, which will ship next week. Uh, all materials, uh, again, the date that have been confirmed by Scholastic will be in district before August 19th, which is a date given to administrators and teachers. All this together means we have a completely different look and feel in our classrooms, math and language arts, from the, from the opening, from September. We are on, uh, on target to meet our, our deadlines. And again, our Tier 1 and Tier 2 trainings, as the outline before, will continue. We're looking as quickly as possible to build Tier 3 and Tier 4 so that we have every single classroom on our workshop model. And you can see how we can spend that workshop, not just into reading, but into writing and then beyond language arts. So that's exciting. The assessment kits that were purchased for all teachers K2 um, and the materials that were purchased for uh, the assessment kits that we're going to assemble, as Ms. Milan explained during the retreat, uh, have all been ordered and will be coming in again. So that's going to allow our teachers to appropriately assess students on a regular basis to see how they're developing as readers and writers. Um, and so that we can tailor instruction on a daily basis to what the individual students need. Again, this big push to individualize instruction, give teachers the resources they've been clamoring for for a while so that we can assess and use data to drive the instruction. Also change the communication with our parents so that they understand literacy, literacy development, and where their specific center door is so that they can help and partner at home. So it truly is a collaborative process where students are being supported 24-7. All teachers are going to be trained on that. We will be leveraging performance management to help teachers uh, maintain warehouse and analyze that data on a regular basis, not just in the class, but as teams of teachers. The tool allows us to do that. It also will help us moving forward so that second grade teachers know a great deal about their incoming students long before um, they leave first grade. So it really improves our collaboration as a K-12 district. Uh, talk about professional development. Uh, parent information link. As I talked to the board, we did reach out to our consultants. I find there's no one doing in August, but I've been reaching out to the PTOs, finding a great deal of people are on vacation. Uh, summer apparently is not the best time, so she has agreed to hold off, and we will have our parent information link in September, right after opening, looking to the PTOs, our administrators, as we get people coming in as they do at the very beginning of the year, getting the word out that we'll be having this session, and we'll, we'll pick a large area and have everyone so we can start the conversation about what we're doing with literacy research and so um, last piece in academics, science. Again, thank you to, to Roche, but also to the board and what we're able to do with the budget. We supported the purchase of all K-5 science materials. They arrive in the district today. Um, well, actually, Friday. Friday. Well, today. We, uh, we walked over today. They were uh, in the hallway. Mr. Vanya was running around frantically trying to take care, make sure everything was secure. Um, it was a great deal of information. They're all kids. So not your, your stereotypical, well, we bought textbooks to teach out of. Um, again, my phrase, which I was taught two districts prior, is that when you're doing science, you have to get to, you have to, get to roll up your sleeves and, and interact with the things you don't just read about them, but you actually do them. And based on the success of our pilot, the kids are filled again. And we're looking to expand that K-5 across the board. So those kits are here. Mr. Ben and Ms. Valani have already developed the staff members plan for a K-5 professional development. They'll be receiving uh, multiple days, and again, they will not be asked to teach any of the science program until they've had the initial professional development. The way we're scheduled, science and social studies are paired in our schedule. They'll be, getting, they'll, be, they'll be beginning the year with social studies, which they're familiar with, and moving to science after the professional development has occurred. So again, trying to make sure that while we do want to move forward, we don't move forward without the appropriate supports in place. Special services, you heard the update again tonight, and just to reiterate, special services is the department that's constantly in flux. You don't know the, you don't know the population from one year to the next, even if you have static students, those students are developing and growing and reacting to our program, which is why you have continual IP needs and things change. As things change, we have to adapt our department to meet the needs of the existing population. And that is something that we're working very hard to do. Uh, we've been playing catch up and we want to move ahead into the year. I want to commend um, the administrators and the child study team members, uh, the building administrators for their support. Uh, it's been a great deal of work to this point and uh, I really do think we're starting to see traction um, from the secretaries in the department to the teachers on the ground, we're trying to really build a collaborative effort, a coordinated effort to support the students and what they have in the past. Mm -hmm. Staffing, um, we are still hiring teachers. We have a process, and again, I've been trying to get to the administration to thank you for handling the email. Sometimes our timeliness is we're trying to make sure we get everyone as quickly as possible. We were here with some surprises, as you know, at the very end of the year, but have to report that we are addressing those. And we, a case in point, uh, we'll be appointing uh, 
with your, with your approval of local music teacher. Um, so we're trying to move these safety pieces forward. Also happy to report that uh, we will be appointing the municipal principal later on this evening, and we'll talk more about that when we get there. Um, our HESPA data is an ongoing piece, but again, to update the board, our cycle one data, um, scores were downward in early July. You know, Mr. Rosati is here and he's been working. Thank you, Chris, for the transition to a new position that the board approved. Um, first, this has started. She's been in district a number of days with Mr. Lilio. She actually spent a, almost a full day with Mr. Rosati, who's laughing because he knows the work that he's in, that, that's in front of her. Um, but we are currently waiting on our cycle two data, which will be available later in the summer. And then, as always, that will be coupled with all of our student performance data for a public presentation before the board and anyone who's interested. Um, and Jay asked you, I'm going to boil it together. We received our AP scores, I'm waiting excitedly for those to log in. They will be part of a larger presentation, but as a general summary, um, I've been working with Mr. Williams and Mrs. Cavillia since we got the scores to go through the specific scores for each class, each teacher, each department. We'll be working with our coordinators. We took a, a very different approach to advanced placement this year. That's going to continue to a heightened level next year. Overall summary for how we did, though, um, we have more students in high school in AP classes. We had more students taking EP tests, and we had a higher percentage of students who were in classes taking the tests. All of those are good. On top of that, though, I'm hired to say that we had um, more students passing the test, and a higher per percentage of students passing the test than we've ever had. And so that is positive as well. There are certain things, again, that's general data. I'll be presenting course by course. And again, what we do when we look if we sit down with specific teachers, what level what, what did happen with others things more appropriately? This is our first year with performance matters. Depending on the course and the department, we have different levels of success. But as we move forward, we'll see more of the same. And again, I know it was one of our, our 12, 13 goals, and I hope to see it continues a 13, 14 goal. The big piece I'd like to make again with the public here is that success in advanced placement has less to do with the advanced placement classes than it does with the preparation that comes for all the years prior to advanced placement. We need to get the word out to parents of kindergarten students, let alone high school students, that they need to be talking to sons and daughters about this appropriate and we can help do that. But we need to be thinking about taking the most rigorous schedule possible in our schools because at the end of the day, you don't need to major in physics to have taken the AP physics class. Um, it just provides more opportunities for our students and that's, that's the end game for us. When our students leave here at 12th grade, the idea is that they have the most opportunities available to them and that they're able uh, and willing to choose which opportunities they get. They, they think best suit them. So I'm excited about the AP scores. Is it where we want to end up? No, but it definitely was a, a good step forward. Um, submission of state reports, again, just to update the board. Mr. Levine, Mrs. Alessio, um, Mr. Veenmeister worked all year long to keep us in compliance with the state reporting. Um, we have to make sure, as we've been cited in the past, that we hit all of these important dates. I'm happy to say that we are currently exactly where we need to be. Summers are a big time for updating Right now we're working school report card, um, our county district and school report, and our graduate report, but we're on, on, on uh, schedule to meet all of our deadlines as appropriate. And the good news is every time we go through this, especially now having real time here a year, um, what we're finding is the data keep becoming more and more clean. And that's what we want. Our first submission does not come back, if another variable comes back, exactly. Exactly. And that's what we're looking for. So hopefully that, that we see as progress as well. I'm going to give you credit to that. Um, I want to congratulate Ms. Ossetia, her staff, her minions, um, and the Academic Booster Club for another successful year of Let's Learn. I like the fact that the board office located where it is in the sense that I get to go there. Um, I got to see all the different classes, our staff members working with those kids. They were happy, they were excited, they were engaged, they were learning, um, and that's terrific. We're a 12 month learning institution, and that's another example of that. So, again, thank you to everyone. Uh, I was there to see some of the drama presentations in their final week. The kids up on stage performing, it's fantastic, uh, and was there for the open house song past Friday, uh, where they had their slideshow, and the parent turnout, we filled that over 20. Um, and it's a fantastic program, I'd like to see. We've already talked to Ms. Ossesia, um, who commented on how she transitioned the evaluation process we're using in district for teachers and administrators, actually to let's learn in a way where they're being reflected, and has a number of things she right away wants to sit down and discuss for next year, so I'm looking forward to that discussion. Um, upcoming events, our administrative retreat is next week. I can't believe we're here already, but all of our administrators will be together 6, 7, and 8 um, to make sure that we're set and ready to go for a successful 13, 14. New teacher orientation, um, working with our administrators, our staff, uh, the association, August 27th to 29th. Um, and as promised, we'll talk about it a little bit later, but upcoming, we'll be scheduling a gifted and talented information night. 
for most likely the last week of August. Um, we'll be getting information out to all parents, not just parents of students who have already been identified, because again, we're, we're moving toward an original for all model. So that will be happening. GSAC reevaluation, we have not, as uh, Dr. Shittenhouse also reported, we have not gotten our letter back yet um, from our QSAC reevaluation, but uh, Ms. Vermillion and I met with uh, members of the county office um, based on their initial feedback. We're exactly where we need to be. Again, our QSAC review happened at 11, my first two weeks in, and uh, we started there, which was a good starting point. We need some outside feedback. Uh, it seems as if we have addressed every issue that was highlighted as something out of compliance. We won't get the final letter until after the August board meeting because they have to wait for two final approvals, which we can't do until then. Um, so hopefully we'll get that letter before the end of August. Uh, before the end of August. Um, but still looking for some, some good news there. We talk a lot about professional development. I want to highlight an important piece. We, we were approving a revised a revision to the calendar again. And what we've been doing in pieces is working with the LPC, and I'm sorry it's happening in three stages. But we didn't want to rush and do everything at once. We want to make sure we get the calendar out in a timely way so parents and, and staff can make plans. We'll be adding three single session days to the school year, and I'm hoping that they go as planned, in which case they will be re recurring every single year. We have so much going on. We've actually sat down, Mrs. Christian Settles here, but um, Ms. Galani and myself, we've actually mapped up the entire year for professional development as is. And I can tell you, with our change in schedule, with the change in the opening and the close of school, with these extra days, there's still just not enough time to get to everything that we need to get to. We want to make sure special education is included in our professional development, not just for special education teachers, but for the entire district. Um, the new evaluation system, the math series, the language arts philosophy, our science piece. Um, there's a great deal going on in district. It's, it's an exciting time, um, but that's why we're making these changes. The revision will be posted on the website as soon as it's approved by the board, so I want parents to understand, because I do understand, that it can be burdensome. We work, there are other things going on. Uh, while school certainly isn't daycare, it, it's difficult sometimes to plan around a revised schedule. We're trying to get them out as quickly as possible. The dates are January 17th, March 20th, and April 23rd. We try to space them in so that we have professional development going on every single month. And this way, this helps us continue that trend. Again, the first day isn't until January, and we're reporting it now, so that parents in the community have time to adjust their schedules and make appropriate plans. Um, Going back to get the in town, uh, Ms. Malani and I sat down with Mrs. Wood Murphy, who we appointed. She did uh, actually attend the conference as we discussed in Connecticut. Came back with a wealth of information, able to assess where we are and where we need to go. Based on those pieces, she's putting together a comprehensive presentation. A couple of key things. Number one, we're not losing any of the program that we've had in the past. We will still be identifying students. Um, those students will still have not only um, the pullout time, but access to those after school activities that they've come to love and the district has come to support. All those things will be going on. The major change is that we, she will be working directly with teachers to ensure what hasn't been going on, what should have been, which is that the 95% of the week, where they're in their general education classes, they're getting differentiated instruction that's rigorous for them. Basically, the math series, the new language arts model, um, and Ms. Woods Murphy's support of these specific teachers. The idea is we're giving teachers even more support in reaching these individual students. So when she's working with them on the pullout, she has more information to go back and sit with the individual teachers to have conversations about what's going on in class. Again, 5% of the week is not acceptable. 100% of the week is acceptable. Um, and that's what we're working for to get the instruction. So um, we will be published. Once we finalize that date, we'll get it out, not just directly to parents, but to the whole community. So please look for that. Summer Strategies Program um, began July 1st. Highlight students who need extra support or support continuing through the summer um, have been working with our staff in language arts and math every single day. The sessions go through August 2nd. Um, we were in the high school again, seeing some of the teachers at work. And again, our job is to make it fun for the kids and engage them. We want them to walk in better prepared in September than they would have been. So again, 12 months learning needs to achieve another thing like that. Uh, last piece was just again our model classrooms. Going back to Ms. Klein, uh, we've worked with the teachers professional development since the summer started. So we've had teachers in here, um, even actually before technically the summer months started, every single teacher made themselves available for math training over the course of three days after the end of school. Um, so every single teacher, you can see the commitment of our staff wanting to make sure that we are prepared for September uh, in ways that we haven't been prepared in the past. And we want to keep supporting that, keep encouraging that. Our model classroom training went on for Tier 2. The goal is to catch Tier 2 up as much as possible with Tier 1. So that tiers one and two are working separately but together through the course of 13, 14 years. So we see guided reading, we see appropriate assessment, we see level libraries. And my big hope just from the get-go 
is parents can walk in, and students will walk in to classrooms that look and feel different. That has the kind of classrooms our teachers have been trying to build on their own now with district support, they have the appropriate resources. And remember, while not every teacher K-5 or K-8 is involved in Tier 1 or 2 yet, every single teacher will be receiving the resources as, as we roll out. So that we can kind of accelerate the learning for all of our, our teachers and therefore all of our students. Mr. Mr. Lassen, thank you very much. Very comprehensive, and uh, I appreciate your updates. Before I go on, I just would like to uh, ask the board to remove the approval of Tri County Camera Club under Finance Resolution Number Two to request the bill moves. Had some questions for additional information, so we're going to put that on for the next meeting. We have a lot of uh, a lot going on in finance on tonight's agenda, but just to make a few highlights, uh, there's a lengthy list of transfers. The majority of the transfers are directly directly related to the purchases that Mr. Lazarus has already outlined this evening, which is for all those new instructional resources that are coming into the district. Uh, we're also doing some work with respect to building maintenance and to attending to some building safety. And that is the removal of a lot of the dead trees and debris surrounding a lot of these schools. So this evening the board is approving the removal of all of that work at Lincoln, Washington, in the Oval, and at the Atlas. I'm happy to announce that the state has awarded us an additional $48,000 to allocate into the 13-14 budget. When they originally presented the budget to us, they were assessing us for some debt service on projects that they had afforded money to the district. And the increase on that assessment was 50% over last year. Well, there was a lot of uh, feedback going back to the governor's office, and when they, the state approved the budget, they approved giving us that, that increase. So this evening, the board is approving uh, the receipt of an additional $48,000 and allocating it into the budget for 1314. Uh, we also are approving some facility projects, uh, namely uh, the securing the entrance to Lincoln School and repairing of the old bleachers. And with the architects, we are going to be applying for what is called broad grants, which is state support for 40% of those projects. So this is the first step in that application process. And at the same time, just a brief update, the architects are currently preparing bid specifications and the applications to file with the Department of Education for the finishing the roof at Nutley High School and replacing the fire doors, which is all part of the referendum, 2007 referendum funds. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Jones. Committee reports. Okay, the ad hoc committee for the attorney review uh, met on July 10th. It was attended by Mr. Klein, Ms. Russo, Mr. Lasvik, and myself. Uh, eight firms submitted proposals for, um, for the board attorney. We reviewed uh, the applications and the committee established a plan to schedule um, and select firms for the interviews. The administration um, conducted reference checks, and from those reference checks, we've selected four firms to interview, and we're going to be interviewing them on this one. Thank you. Okay, also, um, the Long Range Facility Planning Committee also met on July 10th. Um, we reviewed the demographic reports. We also reviewed the architect reports and uh, looked at all the proposals. We needed to go back to the architect for clarification for some of the information, so as soon as they get back to us, we're going to schedule another meeting date. Thank you. Anything else? No, that's it. Thank you, Mr. President. <clears throat> Finance Committee uh, met on July 24th. And in, in addition to the various items that Mrs. Amy's already discussed, uh, we had a presentation by Tom Yuko of IMAC on the uh, student accident renewal. Uh, Bollinger's our current carrier, and they were proposing a basically 100% increase from 24000 to 48000 unlike previous year where they pooled all the experiences they're starting to experience right 
districts on their own, and we had some we had a significant claim this past year, uh, over $50,000 in one claim. Uh, he also put the thing out to bids. There were several competing uh, bids, some of which were slightly lower. However, the coverage was not as good, and the committee felt that those lower uh, bids put the district too much at risk. It either, either that or it placed too much burden on the parents if the students are this hurt, and uh, we didn't think that was fair. And so we recommend that we go with the uh, Bollinger community. We also, in conjunction with the uh, three proposals that were on the agenda, we had a lengthy discussion on the bidding process to make sure that we were in compliance. Uh, the bids that came in were well below the 10%, uh, less than the state, the state uh, provider vendor would be. However, because of the total dollar amount, we were concerned that we would be in violation of the bid, that we'd have to go out to bids. The bids for the true service. For the, for the true service. Mm -hmm. And because of the timing of it, one of the done before school year started, I think the scope has been reduced so that we are under the threshold and we don't have to go out to bids. We also, we reviewed the personnel recommendations mm -hmm. that uh, Mrs. Amos made. Thank you, Mr. Cook. Anything else? Mr. Spazov? Mr. Scalero. Yes, just a short update on our uh, poll, our school security and polling locations. Um, Lincoln School <coughs> and Radcliffe School, we've applied to move the uh, polling locations out of those buildings. Uh, one to 65 Bloomfield Avenue with the cooperation of Commissioner Tucci. Uh, one to the Nutley Museum uh, with the cooperation of the, uh, of the board at the museum. And then they confirmed that because I them off. also calls into Commissioner Tucci. Those letters have been sent to the township. Uh, uh, town clerk and to the county for them to cap inspect those two locations. We're ranking our locations. We have some discussions still ongoing on the other locations, and I'll also be reading a resolution tonight uh, that will be sending to the state on polling locations. Thank you. Thank you very much. We now come to the portion of our meeting where we allow members of the public to address the board. In this section, we allow questions or comments on all the resolutions addressed in tonight's agenda. Our board regulation allows 20 minutes for these communications. Each person will be limited to three minutes, and we ask you to strive to try to stay within that requirement. Speakers may speak more than once, only after all others wishing to speak on a topic have been heard. All statements will be directed to me as the chairperson. No one may address board members individually. Please be reminded that if your statement is too lengthy, personally directed, abusive, obscene, irrelevant, or redundant, your participation may be terminated. Please remember to always state your name and address each and every time you address the board. The first person can step forward. Wow, well, you almost missed it. <laughs> Since we have so many people here at club, maybe they want to talk about this. Uh, good evening, Mr. President. Alan Thomas, 108 McKinley Street in Dudley. Uh, again, thank you, Ms. Raymond. So she's answered already some of my questions uh, that I have on the, on, the, uh, on the agenda. But I did want to talk a little, ask a few more questions about finance resolutions 20 and 21. That's the future replacement of the high school and the Lincoln School change in use. Just being an average of a citizen reading this on the uh, website, change in use for Lincoln School, well, that, in my imagination, could wonder. I thought maybe we're going to change it to you know, a firehouse or something. I don't know what that meant. Um, but all we're doing is changing the front entrance. Is that what we're talking about here? Yes, we can. Okay. Uh, in And how is this going to be funded? We're, we're using a uh, regular uh, general budget. We will not be able to done this year, but now based on the fact that we're going to roll over the capital reserve, basically using last year's budget, which is budget for work like this, we're just doing more of the cost. Okay. And you have an estimated cost? I don't think we can use that. Same question about the bleachers. Um, I have to do that. 
estimated cost or the general idea? Yes, you said we're bringing in the property. Of course, we're trying to partner with the town. And the scope of the work will be done together. And that's what we're going to do. Our goal is that we don't keep putting band aids on the issue that there's some essential piece of the town that we should be done. We do this regularly because we need to address it all along to make sure that we're getting to the root issue of the problem and the correct issue. It turned out to be a great deal worse than we initially thought, so we have to look at the amount for a long time, unfortunately. So we, the architect will take some time to do their studies and then give us all the information we have. And we're going to lose general funding yeah. for that too? As we reworked the budget, one of the, one of the commitments to this board was to make sure that we were appropriately maintaining the facilities that our students and our community use. Uh, in order to do that, we need to work the budget so that we have line items where we can afford general maintenance um, and repair. And again, we can tell some of this because of the way the city works, the buildings are going to be to reserve and maintain the facility it's, it's all existing money, we're not adding to the uh, Mr. President, uh, Earlier this year, the board approved the retention of a consultant to just under the guise of the uh, sixth grade shift. Mm -hmm. yes, okay, have we heard from that consultant yet? We are waiting to meet with them, I think, to get some more feedback. We met with them. We have. We have. We have. We have. We have. That information was used by the architect for the team to use. There will be a presentation uh, that the last piece that was uh, can we ask you to focus on high school? Well, I, I raise that because uh, it would seem to me if we need to do any configuration for that, that, that would be a priority even over our old and decrepit fleet, unless some of the declared bleachers to be a safety and security hazard is unusable to people. That, that is not the case because we let them continue the way they're going and certainly would be the case. I realize that, but my point is, are we going to have enough money in our capital reserve, our general fund, to do whatever we need to do to affect whatever this consultant says we want to do? We're going to have to look into it once we get our hand around the whole picture. What we're trying to do is, is look at the entire district and not going to let Shouldn't we wait then before we go forward with the leisure? I want to make sure that we're taking care of all of our, all of our facilities, and this is something we have to address. I know, but if there's not enough money, we're going to have to make decisions on what's going to be spent and what's not going to be spent. Anyone else wish to address the board on resolution items? Mr. Thomas, you're still up. Thank you. Mr. President, I just note that in violation of board policy and academic resolution number one, uh, we're retroactively approving the use of uh, facilities, including some as far back as March. Field trip, but excuse me. Uh, yeah. Some of them go back as far as March. You look at the very first one. Unless that was supposed to be March 1, 
Ms. Nancher, can you have um, academic resolutions, please? Um, yes, Mr. President. I meant to start academic resolutions one through six um, with a change to the Miller High School field trips under um, item number one, changing the dates um, to 2014 in March and May. Thank you, sir. Second. Mr. Cook, the second at Wolf Yes. Mr. Klein? Yes. Mr. 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 Yes
um, salary there until the board can get further explanation. <coughs> Sorry. Sorry. Discussion. Uh, just the discussion so everyone understands. We didn't have an opportunity to meet the committee, uh, so you guys don't have the opportunity to understand what that's about. So once we meet, which is Wednesday, we will give you guys an update. We put this back on the agenda. Uh, well, okay. Thank you. Um, also on the agenda of personnel is the promotion of our um, middle school principal, Ms. Egan, who I know is here someplace. Yes. <laughs> In this section, we have. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, Mr. Cook. Yes, Mr. President. I move uh, down the resolution number 23, depository of school funds, and number 24, petty cash funds. Thank you. Call call, please. Yes. 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 Mr. Yes. Mr. Scalera? Yes. Mr. Pizzato? Yes. Mr. Kaczynski? Yes. Okay. <laughs> In this section, we allow questions or comments on all school-related matters. Our regulations allow 30 minutes for these communications. Again, each person shall be limited to three minutes, and we ask you to try to stay within this requirement. As I stated earlier, all statements will be directed to me. I'll take the first <coughs> question from the audience. I'm Terry Clark, 45 Hampton Place, spokesperson for the Milton County Advocacy Network. Um, I mean, first of all, I want to thank the board and Mr. Lasbeck for um, hiring Mrs. Ethan. She is fabulous and we're really, really excited because she's a really great special ed friendly person and I know that was one of the concerns I had shared with you. So thank you and we're really looking forward to you know, having you as principal. Um, I do have a, a couple of questions in regards to the presentation uh, that Dr. Shippenhouse had. Um, she was talking about a parent advisory committee. Now, I know that we had started one last July. Um, Mr. Lasbeck had appointed uh, Diane Bolton, and she had uh, asked Kimberly Donnelly with another mom, Jalisa Lalaka, and myself, and we were working towards just bringing that together. I'm just a little confused as to why that's now being expanded? Is is that is that CPAC being expanded? How's that? If you remember, I think it was my first meeting. We spoke about the fact that we don't have the CPAC as appropriate. Um, when we hired our previous director, one of his first pieces was to put that together. My understanding was that that's how it was done. Mm -hmm. um, as Dr. Shipnaus came in and met, she's been to almost every meeting of those. Two, those that's more than one group that meets technically right. on that night. Um, what she came to realize is we didn't actually follow the procedure uh, rolled out by the state. So we're not disbanding. She's actually, I think, already been in contact with Ms. Bolton. Um, but we have to kind of recreate that group. And make it, in, in a way, what we're doing is extending it. Mm -hmm. They're going to have more regular meetings, they're going to be more set agenda. And the biggest piece actually comes from feedback from the UN is Bolton is that by having board liaison, we automatically then have a presentation or update every board meeting on the meetings that go on there. So it's not a disbanding so much as a reorganization in line with the state policy. Okay. So we'll hear about that. So what She's going to advertise all that information to be extremely public. We're trying to get as much input and in, in cooperation as we can. So the same people that were on the committee, they can reapply to the yeah. and I'm, I'm confused, like, does Dr. Shippenhouse pick who to own the committee? No, she said the lottery. So okay. we, don't, we don't physically pick, it's not a, uh, why not Terry Plyce, we bring Terry in. It's, um, everyone in certain categories goes into all the way she's talking and then they serve two year terms. Two year terms, okay. Um, I do have a question in regards to uh, the summer program, the extended year program. Uh, there was a question on whether or not there were field trips 
for the children, especially our children, uh, there was a question uh, that had come to my attention, and when a parent had, um, she was told that there were no field trips, and when she went on to uh, learn about why there wasn't, she was told a new director, a new rules. I was just wondering, I, I know, I know, that's why I'm here. Um, I was just wondering, how does that apply? Is that? I, I wish I had more information for you specifically. I can't say I, I wasn't aware there was a conversation about this why and field trips. Um, what I can tell you is that um, it's not a new director moving. We have a new director, but we're following the state's rules. Um, so I, I can get more information on, on that for you. And one other thing uh, in regards to special ed, uh, there we did have a meeting about a couple of weeks ago, well, actually it was about a couple of months ago, and um, it was a special ed meeting. Uh, IEP meeting that didn't go as well, and Dr. Schickenhaus was there, and I was there, and you have to understand that uh, at IEP meetings, there's, the district is is, rep is represented by many, many people. Um, the child study team, teachers, guidance counselors, sometimes principals, sometimes the director, and so it, it could be a little bit intimidating to the parent. Um, it didn't, suffice to say, that particular meeting didn't end as well, and in the, at the end of the meeting, I must have said something that offended Dr. Schickenhaus, I didn't need to be, but I was told by her at the end that every time I show up at a meeting, um, board council will be uh, attending as well. Now, I show up at a lot of meetings, Mr. President, but you know, and sometimes uh, I'm there if I have a chance to get out of work or I'm there to assist parents, so I, I just, I really don't want to have an adversarial um, relationship, and I, I want my parents to feel comfortable. Many, many times my parents will come to me before the meeting, and they'll talk about the meeting, and what they can say, and what they can do, and, and it seems to go smoother when the parents are feeling comfortable, and, and you know, there's a certain amount of respect on both sides. And I just wanted to put that out there, that um, I really would not like to go down that adversarial road. That's not my intent. Sure. And I'm sure and it was new to Mrs. Schiffhouse, to you, the program, the way we're trying to move forward. I'm sure it, it should be a lot smoother if, if not that way already. Okay. Thank you. I also, just very briefly, I just have something to show. I have copies for everyone, and I just wanted to share with you something that came to my attention. What you're seeing is a copy of a yearbook picture that was taken from uh, Washington School's uh, yearbook just recently. Uh, and uh, there were some concerns in regards to that particular uh, picture. Um, I had spoken to a few of the parents, and one of the parents actually had contacted me and gave me a copy of the picture. Uh, but there was a concern about it being, I'm just reading their reactions. Okay, don't kill the messenger. It's, they said that it was creepy. They felt that, um, as you can see, it's, it's a picture with the three classes. The teachers are not present, and Mr. Jones is laying across um, the bottom of the picture. Okay, so um, one mother said it was creepy. Another mother said it made the hair on the back of her head stand up. Another mother said it was uncomfortable and questionable, inappropriate and unprofessional. These were words. One person found it offensive that he was they, she claimed, thrusting his pelvis. Another person said they can't believe that a principal could pose for such a picture. And many, many people were saying, where are the teachers? Now, I just want you to know that evidently, allegedly, this picture was, um, was circulating around pool parties and graduation parties, and it's been a talk. And it's just a concern that we have because we know that we expect a certain amount of professionalism and from our principals, and we really look up to our principals, and knowing that those students are not going to come here and they're going to have a very different principal with Mrs. Egan, we just want to really make sure that professionalism is across the board with everyone. So I'm just sharing that with you, and if you have any questions, you can always get back to me. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wants to be heard?
Um, Crystal C 261 Grand Avenue. Um, uh, you beat me to it, but Sorry. I came to thank all of you for your support um, because we couldn't run Let's Learn. And on behalf of the Academic Booster Club, I want to thank all of you. Um, the, I'm there that you see, but the program wouldn't run without all of your support. Um, and I want to thank you for helping with the building. And seeing uh, Mr. Nicolette and the custodians and the maintenance staff that worked around me in the high school, Mr. Williams and Mr. Francine, who helped me feel at home at the high school and showed me the way around. And Mr. Beemeister and the tech guys who helped me every time I needed to get a good problem. So thank you all for your support. And, and I really want to thank you because I, I was there quite a few times throughout this, the month. Um, obviously, I have no problem with my grandson, but with the other children there, to see our staff being able to, to clean out one room so that the students could fit into another room and working around the, the, the many, many children that we had there. Like Mr. Laswick said, the, the auditorium on the last day was, was full of parents, grandparents, very exciting, and, and um, the classes were outstanding. Thank you. That's my staff. They were a great job. They're not the teacher, so there you Thank go. You. But if you'd like to attend to Anyone else wish to address the board? Where is the board of education? Yeah, sorry, sorry. 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 Okay, I just wanted to congratulate the team. Congratulations. Well deserved uh, the incoming principal. I wanted to address the fact that tonight is Ms. Wynn's uh, last meeting from what I hear. Uh, congratulations, you've done a wonderful job and uh, you made a tremendous board member. So we're going to miss it. Uh, the other question I have yeah. The other question I have is uh, I appreciate the fact that we're doing some um, remediation to these uh, trees in the schools. Uh, I believe you said the oval. Uh, Lincoln School and the Attico School, is that correct? No, the Oval and, and Lincoln School. Okay, I said the Attico School as well. The trees? Yeah. Oh, the trees, yes. Okay, so the Attico School as well, which is uh, necessary. Yes. What, where do we stand after that uh, remediation of those areas? Where do we stand as far as our surplus on that uh, 2006 referendum? As, as what do we have now and what will we have left? After that. I don't know the exact amount that is done that's left, Mr. Robin, um, but it is still ongoing. As long as it is ongoing, the resolution money is still out there. Well, there is a deadline. As um, I had mentioned in my report, we're working on the high school roof mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the fire doors at the high school as the first two projects with that service. Okay. And then the trees is part of the same. The trees have nothing to do with the trees. Trees are part of the general okay. That's just general so then, um, I apologize for that uh, mistake. So after that, do you know what we're going to name this year? Is there any present? At this point, until we get the cost estimates, we don't. So the architects are working on those. Do we know what the surplus is today? About one point five, two point two, between one point two and one point five. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else wish to be heard? <coughs> Hi, Amy Christine, 237 North Road. I was just curious about the junior high and rumors of the sixth grade moving out of the elementary school and what's truth and what's not at this point. Takers? No. <laughs> what, what's true is that we have a space issue throughout the district. Right. What's true is that we have an ad hoc committee that's looking at the space issue. We hired a demographer to give us a direction <coughs> moving out five to seven years. Um, we have the architect looking at all of the possible options to help us address the space issue. What's true is that if you're packing students into rooms that are not, not only is that are compliant with state regulations, but it's bad for learning. Um, what's true is that the board is looking at the most responsible way to support the best instructional environment at the least cost to the taxpayer in the community. And what's true is that we're currently in process. Mm -hmm. um, what is also true as well as that from being is that no decisions will be made and no one will be moved anywhere without an appropriate process taking place and involving our, all of our stakeholders, including our students, including our parents. Um, I've had great feedback from PTO meetings I've gone to, kind of communicate where we are and what we're doing, um, and we're trying to make sure we're putting instruction to first and looking at how we can maintain the character <coughs> and um, the respect of our buildings and make sure that they're appropriate for the kind of learning needs to go on today. Okay. Thank you. Can I ask another question? Yeah, 
I was also wondering with regards to the elementary school level and the art teachers, and if it's true that two schools are getting full-time art teachers, versus, are you continuing with the four rotating amongst, We're or are two to going it. to yeah. stay? We're <coughs> not going with a rotation. Okay. We're going to set schedule based on the number of classes that we have to offer, though we only have four teachers for five buildings. Um, the reason for that is even with that schedule, we still have some more free periods than we would like. Um, two of the buildings based on their size, Yannickle and Lincoln, have standing teachers. Um, Washington School and Radcliffe School have standing teachers, and those two teachers will be sharing the schedule at Spring Garden. But that schedule will be set. So the students will have the same teacher throughout the year for the full program of the work in one department. So we won't have a rotation where students are getting But Lincoln and Yannickle will have one teacher in their, in, their facility, in their building all year. Yes. Based on their numbers. Yes. And what if, for instance, Washington school's numbers all of a sudden go up because of the masses, massive amount of construction that's going on over on Center Street? I mean, you're talking 30 students difference is all. And you always are preaching about all the elementary schools being the same. Now, right off, you, you mark that off your checklist if you're the same when not every elementary school has and our teacher in children. Not everyone has the same special ed population. We have to support with our teachers and gym teachers as well. When I say the same, I mean every single student here, regardless of the neighborhood, should be exposed to the same program, which is exactly what's going on. If we have a growth, which we're already planning for through our planning process, um, we'll address that when we have numbers change, the same way we're addressing our special services department as the population changes. What I can tell you is that every single student will be exposed to the same curriculum, the same way, and next year, the way we have in the past, with a consistent teacher. Okay. And like the same amount of times. I mean, are you still going to bring in that whole enrichment and the enrichment technology, is never, like that section is going to be so we're good to go for a different way to do that. Now we have different specialists, and we this with CJ and Mr. Levine on the technology side. Um, I want to make sure we're not confusing them. Those who never join, while they, they seem to be because of scheduling, our art curriculum and our art instruction has nothing to do with the enrichment site. It has nothing to do with the technology other than they make the <coughs> Um, one was not a substitute for the other. Well, yeah, we can say that, but everybody feels, still felt like it was substituting art. Because yes, the I, kids I weren't getting the art. Truth. And we can keep trying to communicate to people, which is what I think we've gotten from the PTOs, as well as the art department, and our specialists for gifting and talents, as well as the elementary principals. Okay. I want to make sure that they have okay. a rich program. I've been a, a, a proponent of all of the arts since my, since my first day. Okay. I still believe that, and so we can expand it as something we'd like to do. Okay, I want to show you something. Sure. Could you hand me that back? What I'd like to show you all, if I could put this here in a minute. This is just, I have four children, and this is just one of my children's projects. So I'd like you to see, and I'm missing one. This was, my kids were in second grade, my youngest two. This is their stuff from first grade. There's one. And it's all backed up with the artists and the theory behind it. And here's another one, so two, and three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Pretty quality things that came all home from art. And then I have this year's. I have three. So you can say that it's keeping the same, but there is definitely something missing when it's one third of the amount of projects that came home. So I just, you know, just want to mention that. Anyone else would be here? I have another question. Oh, sure. okay. What's the Caroline, Carolina or Caroline curriculum pilot? Science curriculum pilot? Is that the science curriculum? Is that for the junior high? Is that that new integrated one? Right I don't know. I didn't, I didn't, K5. Okay. We'll be piloting in seventh grade to see that the middle level as well. 
why series three wasn't included. Not because we're moving them anywhere, but because the, the way they build the series is different at the middle level. Okay. Um, and so we'll be piling that separately to see something we want to continue to the middle level. Okay. All right. I was just curious. Thank you. Sure. All right. And all business, a new business comes for the board.
and he's fr as frustrated as we are in trying to move this district forward. We want to like change it tomorrow. We're doing everything we can as a board, and we're building, and we, in the last two years, have done a lot to uh, put this district on a trajectory of excellence. Um, and I think we're getting there. Um, we have to continue, though, as a board and as a community, to be focused on. Is that, you know, these high standards that we as a board have set, the superintendent has set, we need to continue to engage in the conversation. Um, these kids have one shot at first grade, one shot at fifth grade, one shot at freshman year. We want them to have the best education possible. In order to do that, we have board here that's ready to do that. We have a superintendent, assistant superintendent, an administrative staff that's doing a lot as well. Um, the teaching staff, the union, we're all really focused on that. And I think what we really do need um, is the community to help us uh, achieve that goal. We, there's a lot to be done, um, and I asked, you know, I'm looking, tonight I thought it was gonna be, so this is gonna be easier to do, but, and I'm happy to have you all here and, and see the presentations and see how the tone of the conversations we're having as a board, as a district have changed. You know, and I encourage you all to come to the board meetings. There is so much information given to you as to what we're doing with your tax dollars, what we're doing for the kids to move this district forward. And I, I have you all here now. This is the captive audience I always talk about. Please come back. I mean, I, every time, and I, and I tell the administrator, you know, the staff to the administrators, and, and I tell the parents, if the superintendent is your building, get to that building and listen to what he has to say. Because we're trying to really change. We need to change the conversation. The community needs to be part of it. And I really encourage you to keep coming, keep seeing where your tax dollars are going. They're being well spent. I think we as a finance committee, um, we've been really trying to build a more responsible budget. And in the span of two years, we've been able to, and this year as a result of that, foresight, we're always talking about five-year plans, 10-year plans. We're always thinking forward, strategic planning. We've, we've purchased all the new math series books for the entire district, science books. Um, where the facilities are being taken care of, we're investing in uh, capital reserve like we never had. It's, we are on the right path, and we really need the community to continue to support the board as they go forward. <coughs> Going forward, I think the board um, with, should continue to be goal-oriented, and it's by establishing high standards for, we, we put it on the superintendent, but that's all we can do the board, but I think it's trickling down into the staff. Like for instance, the AP example. Um, last year, the superintendent gave us a presentation talking about where our students fared on AP. And the board, we were really much, we never had seen it that way. And we said, well, we gotta do something about it. We said, you know, Mr. Lesnick, it's your goal this year to fix those AP test scores and do something about it. And he did, and it, the kids did better, more kids participating, and it's, it seems simple, but it really is about establishing goals and sticking to them. And every decision we make is really tied to a specific goal. Um, I think we need to continue to make decisions consistent with strategic planning. I think we need to implement online grading immediately, and I hope my fellow board members will continue to talk about parent portal. Someone has to take up that role and then <laughs> <laughs> there is. Um, the, the administrative staff and everyone, they, they really need to give the superintendent 110% of their effort. I know they are and have to continue because good things are going to happen in Nutley if you do so. Um, it's our job as a board um, to continue to support the superintendent in the difficult decisions he's making. You know, everything is about change. Every time you change something, there's a lot of pushback. And I think this board has worked well in terms of supporting the superintendent and to continue to do that. The grading system, that was a big issue, but it turned out the superintendent was right. <laughs> okay. um, but we, I would just ask everyone to stay engaged in the conversation. Um, I just want to thank everyone in the community that always would listen to me and help me think about um, everyone, everyone in the special ed community. Um, Barbara Martin, she's standing in the hallway. She came here. She would listen to me and help me. Stay focused and Wayne Greenfenner, my treasurer, and Jen Smythe, she's in the hallway too. She kept track of all my data and would give me emails that I would share to Ross and say, hey, look at this, what are we going to do with this information? Yeah, you don't know. <laughs> you don't know. There's more, and I'm not revealing any more sources. Um, I want to thank 
Um, Joanne Cacciola, she was a great source of inspiration, continues to be. Um, I think that's, she made Nutley super special, and that's why it's extremely sad to leave, because I'm leaving behind a great friend um, who does amazing things. Um, Ruth Bedford, she was always, I always enjoyed speaking with her about education. She was a good supporter. Um, my library board trustees, I'll continue to work with the library board going forward. Um, they were always very helpful. The staff, the teachers, the uh, union, uh, my babysitters, Caitlin Hope, and um, all my friends who made sure I could come to a board meeting. That's how they figured they could contribute to the school district by making sure my kids were had someone watching them. Um, it was a big juggling act for Michael and me, so thank you. And um, lastly, my board members, I want to thank you for the relationships and giving me, um, you know, I think sometimes when, when I first came here, I think, I don't know, maybe, they didn't know what to expect, and I'm glad that we've developed the relationships that we have, um, because I think we're, we always found common ground in terms of what is in the best interest of the district, and I think that was very important. Um, to what we were doing. Um, I'd like to thank um, Lisa and Fred for when we ran in a campaign. I think it was a very positive campaign and I think it was, it, you know, floated to our term here as trustees. Um, and Kevin Gergetti too, I'd be remiss if I didn't thank him too for engaging in such a positive campaign. Um, Jim and Tommy and Charlie, I enjoyed our negotiations. <laughs> <laughs> I think we did a lot. Um, I will continue to respond that, and I, of course, I enjoy all of <laughs> But I enjoyed our talks. I think um, I will continue to keep telling you and watching where you were still. Sorry, Jimmy, but I'm going to still watch. Um, <laughs> um, Debbie, I asked Debbie to please continue to work on the extended day and report back because that's something I feel like I didn't we, we made strides but I think we have a lot more to do and if you want to take up the parent portal <laughs> um, Ryan thank you for always listening to me at the Starbucks and sitting, sitting next to me the last few months I hope I haven't annoyed you too much you know okay. <laughs> and Robert's not here so but Robert, thanks for always looking at me and chuckling every time I talk, I guess. <laughs> um, so that's it. I, I'm i sorry that I have to leave, but I'm going to be watching. And I've told you all, anything you need, I, 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 will <coughs> do what I can do to help you going forward. Just please talk.
Thank you, Mr. Skins. You know, this is kind of like a, a sad note for me. And I, I spoke to Vicki the other day, but my morning in-house counsel has kind of left me because we all know Vicki's a, a great attorney and uh, we met her running and myself and Lisa met her uh, living room when we went to run and came up with uh, programs. And we were all on the same agenda of running, which was a great thing. But uh, Vicki has been uh, a source of, you know, you want to know something, you're not sure where it is, you can give it to the call. You know, she does this for a living. She does school board law. She does municipal law. She has a lot of things under her belt. And she's been great for my morning conversation. I'm truly going to miss her. She loved this district. She's pushed hard for the kids. Um, I know she'll be coming back. She'll be showing up at some meetings, um, which uh, I think will be a lot of fun. But Vicki, you're a great board member. Uh, I met you through the mayor originally. Um, and uh, I good luck to where you go. And, uh, I hope you're looking forward to getting on your school board because I'll give it a couple of years and we'll meet you at the school board meeting and you being on the uh, school board where you are. So good luck. Um, you did great for the school board while you were here and also for the township. Thanks, Richard. That's why. It's really been an honor. I'd like to add that people sit next to you. And, and when, we, uh, when we voted differently on the rare occasion, I either got a kick or a kick. <laughs> But I always, always trusted that if you were there, things were going to be done about that. Um, not just because of your legal background, but because of the integrity that, that comes with, with who you are. Um, all conversations have been great. I remember freezing to death outside of Starbucks one night um, until uh, 11 at night. Um, but they've all been fun, and we're going to do great things. And I don't think we're done with it. Somewhat of a shock. I heard rumors, but I didn't know for sure if it was true or not. So I wish you the best of everything, and you deserve it, and it's been a pleasure serving you. Thank you. Um, I just want to thank Vicki for her uh, professionalism, her dedication, and all the contributions she's made to the board. She's been invaluable to this board, the district, and also the township. Um, thanks, Vicki, you and Michael, for all your hard work and what you've done for Notley. Thank you. Vicki, I'd like to congratulate you on a job well done. I think you did it for all the right reasons, and I valued your counsel and your independence in thinking. And, 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 uh, it was valuable and appreciate it. Thank you. Wow, it's left to me now. I said a lot of people don't, don't know a bit of a relationship that me and you did have. Uh, we had a great time doing negotiations. But Vicky, you always, um, you might not always agree, but we always got along, and you were able to convince me sometimes you way. I think sometimes you listen to my way. And I think that's the way it works on the board. Um, good luck where you're going. I'm going to miss you, and you always come back and see us. Vicki, it's been great having you on the Finance Committee. Uh, I learned a lot from you. You brought out good ideas all the time, and you always have sound reasons for everything. So I appreciate everything that you have given to me and to this committee. And I wish you the best. I will miss you. <laughs> Vicki, you and I have talked quite often. You, you know that I'm going to miss you. I, I think um, you cited everything else you brought to the board, and you know, you, you brought integrity. And, and this board, for us needed that integrity program. We needed the, the solid <clears throat> person that you are to help us certainly with our policies, to guide us in the right direction. I appreciate all you've done for me and um, it's got really mission. You're a good person. Education will be discussing matters of public public discussion pursuant to NJSA 104-12. Now, therefore, be resolved that the Board of Education recess to close executive session at this time to discuss food and matters. Be it further resolved that the results of this, of this discussion will be made public by inclusion on the agenda of a subsequent meeting of the Board of Education or when the reasons for discussing such matters in closed session no longer exist. Uh, All in favor? Uh,